Okay, guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, let's talk about marginal rate of substitution and drive the formula for this concept that we have in consumer theory. So let's jump to it. So what's marginal rate of substitution first? Marginal rate of substitution is the rate that we are going to substitute one good with another in order to keep the overall utility level fixed or in order to stay on the same indifference curve. For example, when we are going to reduce the consumption of X by how much we should increase the consumption of Y in order to keep our utility level fixed. That means there is no change in utility. So this is the marginal rate of substitution. And let me explain this concept with using a graph. For example, suppose we have two goods in your consumption bundle, which is X and Y. If you are going to increase the consumption of X from X1 to X2, how much we should reduce the consumption of Y in order to stay on the same indifference curve? But the question is, why do we need to decrease Y in order to stay on the same indifference curve? Or another way, why do we need to reduce the consumption of Y in order to keep our utility level fixed? For a while, let's suppose, to do not change the consumption of Y. What will happen? We increase our consumption of X from X1 to X2, but we didn't reduce the consumption of Y from Y1 to Y2. We keep the consumption of Y here in Y1. So here, we are moving to another point in, in our plane. So when we're going to move from X1 to X2, but we are keeping Y and Y1, so we move to another point, C, which is completely out of our initial indifference curve. Based on the monotonicity axiom of preference relation, we know that more is better. More of a good is always better. That means more of a good provides you more utility. So in point C, although we have the same level of Y, but we have more of X. We have more of X. So it means when we have more of X, then C will provide higher utility than point A and point B. So we are going to prefer C to A and C to B. It means that C provide higher utility. So it contradicts the definition of marginal rate of substitution. Because in the marginal rate of substitution, we said that we are going to keep the overall utility level fixed. But when we, if we do not change the Y level, so we could not keep the overall utility level fixed because we move to another indifference curve, which is U2 and point C, which provide a higher utility. So the way to keep our utility level fixed is to move along indifference curve because each point in the same indifference curve provide you exactly the same amount of utility. So that's why if we are going to increase the consumption of X, we need to decrease the consumption of Y in order to stay on the same indifference curve in order to have the same amount of utility. As you see here, if we're going to change X from X1 to X2, we use the notation of DX. It means DX has changed the change in X with a very small amount. If we change the X with very small amount of DX, then we change the consumption of Y with another small amount of DY. So in terms of formula, the marginal rate of substitution of X for Y for a utility function that we have U is equal to U of X and Y, U of X and Y, this marginal rate of substitution of X for Y is equal to the change in Y per unit of change in X. And this one is equal to minus marginal utility of X divided by marginal utility of Y. From this formula, dy by dx, you may consider one thing. That the change in Y divided by the change in X is equal to the slope of this indifference curve. So then, in a very simple way, we can define the marginal rate of substitution as the slope of indifference curve. When someone asks you what's marginal rate of substitution, you can simply say marginal rate of substitution is the slope of indifference curve. So this is a simple definition for the marginal rate of substitution. So now, where did we get this formula? 
why the marginal rate of substitution of x for y is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, why this one is equal to this formula, marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y. By using the total derivative, we can, derive, we can derive the marginal rate of substitution as equal to minus marginal utility of x divided by marginal utility of y. Let's do it. So the total derivative says that the change in u, the change in utility, is equal to the partial derivative of u x y with respect to x multiplied by the change in x plus the partial derivative of u x y with respect to y multiplied by the change in y. And also, based on the definition of marginal rate of substitution, the change in utility is equal to zero. The change in utility is equal to zero because we are keeping the overall utility level fixed. So then the du is equal to zero. Du is equal to zero. It will become the partial derivative of u x y with respect to x multiplied by the change in x plus the partial derivative of u x y with respect to y multiplied by the change in y. So we can simplify this formula. How we can simplify? We can write down it as a partial derivative of u x y with respect to x multiplied by dx and move this term to another side of the formula. It will become another side of the equation. It will become minus the partial derivative of u x y with respect to y multiplied by the change in y. So now, divide both sides by dx and the partial derivative of u x y with respect to y. Then what will happen? This one will cancel out with this one, and this one will cancel out with this one. And here, we will have dy over dx. And here, we have the partial derivative of u x y with respect to dx y divided by the partial derivative of u x y with respect to y. So now, write down this one. So we'll move, we can write down here. Then the dy divided by the dx is equal to negative. We have the negative sign. Don't forget this negative sign. We have this negative sign. It's equal to the partial derivative of u, x, y with respect to x divided. Let's write down the negative sign here. The partial derivative of u, x, y divided by the partial derivative of y. From the formula for the marginal utility, we know that the partial derivative of utility with respect to x is equal to the marginal utility of x. And the partial derivative of utility with respect to y is equal to the marginal utility of y. Then finally, we derived the formula for the marginal rate of substitution. And by the definition of marginal rate of substitution, we know that the, the dy over dx, or the change in y per unit of change in x, is equal to the marginal rate of substitution, or as a simple, just sh shortly write down MRS. So then, the MRS, your marginal rate of substitution, is equal to the change in y per unit of change in x, is equal to minus partial derivative of utility with respect to x divided by the partial, de partial derivative of utility with respect to y. And this partial derivative of utility with respect to x is equal to marginal utility of x. And this partial derivative of utility with respect to y is equal to marginal utility of y. So this is the final formula for the marginal rate of substitution that we could derive it by using the total derivative rules. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and share this video to other fellows in order to enjoy together. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.